All right. So this is the little readme I got for it. Uh, basically, it talks about what a uh, binary tree is. And for visual purposes, this is what it is. So you start with a number and then you get more numbers and you build out a little tree like this. Uh, to be honest, just trying to get my head around this concept was a little bit challenging in the beginning. And yeah, so the very first test we got, uh, here we go. This one uh, was very, very easy. All you had to do was create a new class and have it accept uh, input. And then the second test was equally easy. You had to retrieve the input as you were put it in. And that literally was these little lines here. So I couldn't quite work out how to do it with the tribute reader because it was calling a data method specifically to return the number that you passed in. So I had to call the data method. I'm sure there is a way to figure out how you can just use a data method to return the tribute reader and maybe make it less lines of code, but I couldn't quite work that one out. Um, and then this is where it gets complicated and becomes the tree. So as you insert a number, you got to figure out if the number is smaller or greater than the one that came before it and insert it into its right place in the tree. So that became uh, insert, which takes in a second number. And then you're trying to figure out if that number is less than or greater than the original number. And then if it's less than the original number, it goes left. And I wrote a convoluted little script here. I've got a little, lots of little hashtags to remind me what each number does. So as you take the new number, it runs through and he goes, all right, is the new number lesser or greater than the original number? And if it's the same number, don't do anything about it because there's only one spot for each number. If the number's lesser, then you run the second test, second if loop, not a loop, sorry. Um, and it goes, all right, so if left is equal to nil, you create a new class of the number within that number. And that was a little tricky to get my head around because within one class of the original number, so within the original seven, you're, you're setting these two values empty originally. And then if you insert three, you're setting these values. So it's seven, which is a subset of three, which has two empty values again. So that was interesting to figure out how it worked. Um, and yeah, and then as it just goes in, it goes down all the way until it figures out it's empty. And if it's empty, it creates a new. Otherwise, it goes down the tree. So if left is not empty, you run the process again at the second level. So going back to the tree, if you go seven as the original number and you insert three, three is less than seven, it's empty, you create three. And then you go back to seven and insert one, you, well, it's one is less than seven, and then you go three, one is less than three. So you go down this way. And that was fine. And then you did the same for the right. So honestly, these three tests, I sort of, actually even these four tests, I sort of did at like the same level because all it is is figuring out if the number is less than, and if the number is same, if the number is righter than, and then doing a bunch of them at once. So once you figured out the basic structure, that was fine. Um, and then comes this bit. This bit actually got me stuck for four days. I had no clue how to figure it out. So this is just a little method. It's not actually part of the test. And then this test uses that method. So in this original method that was given in the test, it sets the new array to all data. And then for each, you, as, you add the data to the old data and then it recalls and retrieves the array of all data at the end. And then this is the tricky thing. When you go in the assert equals four, record all data new, this method here that you've, caught, you've got has no clue about this because you haven't passed it in. So that was tricky. Um, and I finally figured it out by passing with our end block. Um, and I am 90% sure I know what end block does. And it uses the block of code that was passed directly after this method was called. So it's not like you're actually passing 
an argument in, you're passing in a block of code that just that turns up after the argument, which again was very tricky for me to wrap my head around because you're not passing the argument in. Oh, and the cat's here. Um, and then you just did the same really. So if left was equal to, sorry, if left was not equal to nil, you went down the levels again until you got to the very bottom root and then you recorded that and you went back up the next level and recorded that one. And that's how it builds out that array. Um, and then after that one, so again, once you figured out this method, this is just doing it for one, this is doing it for smaller, this is doing it for larger, and then this is doing it for a whole bunch of them. So once you figured out how it worked once, you could figure out how to do it all again, because it's just, if it's less than or greater than or the same. And then this bottom test, this bottom test is also really weird. Um, I'll just walk you through it. So this is just creating the tree and then inserting them in the tree. So those lines just builds the tree out. And then this enumerator asserting was really doing my head in. Um, I'm still not sure exactly what an enumerator is. I try it a lot. Um, in the documentation, I found that you can do uh, enumerator for or two and num for the enumerator. And that's what I've got in this little line. I don't actually know what it does. I just know that it works. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, I'll be honest, I have no clue what it does or how it works. It just works. Um, yeah. So I had a, this little thing here, begin, rescue, end. When it was passing, uh, where are we? Yeah. When we were passing um, the same numbers, or oh, there was a nil. So when it was calling, it, it was calling nil and it had a nil value for nil method class because it was trying to record nil as into the array, which is why I had to like begin and then if no method error, which is this, then don't do anything. And that was fine until it spat out another error saying you wanted the nil result, which is why I had to, this specific line here, is only for if there's a nil method for nil class error and it records nil in the result, which is what he wants. So yeah, that's my little challenge. Woo. Wow. I've got little, um, little notes everywhere telling what everything does. And I've left some code as like, I've rewritten it better. So originally I had like this, if at left is not equal to nil, then you go in and return left. So if the, if left has a value, return the value of left. Otherwise, you return the value of what is calling it. So if for um, if le if you have seven and three doesn't exist, just return seven. And that was just rewritten into the ternary operator, and then little stuff like that. And then this is just what I was trying to figure out before I figured out this begin rescue and um sort of stuff. And yeah, that's how it evolved over time. That's amazing. That was really good. All right. Uh, did you uh, did you get a chance to submit it to Exorcism as well, like to, to upload your solution? Uh, no, actually, I didn't even realize that was part of it. Yeah, so you don't have to. It's not uh, yeah. not a requirement, but that that's the other half of the Exorcism sort of uh, benefit is that. You can you get given a bunch of these solutions, but then you can also choose to upload your solution and then see other people's solutions. Uh, oh, right, like right, like Code Wars, cool. Yeah, same concept, exactly the same concept. Yeah, and it's just this is just happens to be the one we've chosen to use as Exorcism, but they yeah, work no worries. Same. I'll definitely um, have a look at other people's solutions. Yeah, well, I was just going to ask if you had a, had a chance to look at some other people's solutions because it's um, it's it can be really interesting to be like, well. I completely <laughs> approach this a very different direction, but the yeah, nice thing, I, <laughs> the nice the thing first, about the exorcism so. though is that uh, it doesn't really matter as long as the tests pass, right? So yeah. you, you part, I can see at the bottom end of all the tests pass. So I thought, yeah. sorry, what were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say the first time I did a code was saying I lost, must have passed like 20 of them trying to find an easy one. And I finally did it and I submitted it and 
like one of all the other answers were like one line and mine was like 20. I was like, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I hit that, that can be tricky. Uh, but the nice thing about it is that it's a, it, they also have mentors on there that will often come, go through and have a look at your code and will give you feedback, um, which is really nice. It's like having a code review, but not having to be at work, uh, <laughs> which is really cool. Um, I used to use it. Um, you can choose to either be mental or not mental. Um, and it's, uh, I, I find it quite useful as well. Yeah, that's awesome. But, uh, yeah, nice work. That's a, that's a really, it's a, like a pretty classic computer science, uh, problem that you, you've been solving here as well. So, um, yeah, nice work. Cool. Does, uh, does anyone have any questions for Nathan about his, his solution? Uh, Nathan, you mentioned that you've got to create a new class every time yeah. we get down to the next level. What, why is it you can't like create instances of the same class? So I originally had it going uh, as an array. So when he initialized, he initialized as an array similar to uh, like this and it'll be an array and then it was nil, num, nil. And I was trying to like access the index of, so for, for returning data, I'd be like at num index of one, which returns the num. And then if it was left, it returns this. And that works fine for the very first level. And then as you go to the next level, you've got to know how many steps you are going down because you've got to access that many levels of indexes. But you won't always know that up front. Yeah. And it was like, I was trying to build this complicated thing that like figured out how many layers deep you were, but it wasn't really working for me. And I was stack overflow really. And they were like, all right, you can create a new class of the class within the class, which was really trippy and matrix level, but it works out very, very well. So yeah, like originally it was like, if num is less than and you try to figure out what levels it like how many levels deep it is and you go at index one zero 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 three or oh, sorry two i should say but yeah that's just why it was the class within a class which is really cool that you can actually do that um michael you had a question um, yeah, oh, more a statement, I suppose, to actually re reiterate what you said. I mean, first of all, thanks for sharing this um, solution. I think it was great to watch somebody else's kind of take on this. But the main thing with, um, I really do enjoy the mentorship on exorcism. So, I mean, I'm, I'm a long time JavaScript Ruby guy, but uh, I do, I'm learning a bit of rust on there. And I must say, I do both. I do some JavaScript and Ruby and also the Rust ones. And I feel that even the mentorship on the Ruby stuff just makes you notice things that you wouldn't have noticed before. So I do highly recommend if anyone's doing exorcisms, either even if you know a language well uh, or learning one, uh, the, turn the mentor stuff on, you, you get a lot of really good feedback. Awesome feedback. Thank you. I'll definitely put it up there and get a mentor to have a look at it. Thanks, Michael.